Welcome to Morecambe on the coast of Northwest England. It's the home of Morecambe Football Club. It's also the home of the Gypsy King, the current WBC heavyweight champion, Tyson Fury. We're here as a presser because we are leading up to what is the biggest fight of the year, undoubtedly the undisputed heavyweight title fight between the Gypsy King, Tyson Fury, and undefeated Ukrainian, Mr. Alexander Usyk. Live on the zone worldwide, May 18th. The fight of the century. Tyson Fury versus Alexander Usyk for the undisputed heavyweight championship of the world. Tyson Fury looks to reign as king of the division. But Alexander Usyk is undefeated and coming for the crown. For the first time in over 20 years, all the belts are on the line. Ring of Fire, live on the zone worldwide, May 18th. Here we go. You know, as we do these press conferences and all the stuff that we do to build up to this fight, this is when you start to get excited because we do have the biggest fight in years. It is unbeaten versus unbeaten. Tyson Fury versus Alexander Usyk. We are at Morecambe Football Club. You can see the setup behind us. We are going to see Mr. Tyson Fury and Frank Warren in a few moments. But look what we've got as well. Mr. Barry Jones, Mr. Darren Barker. Big guns. Big guns. The big guns. Yeah. <laughs> they, they, they spent some money on this one. Um, Baz, we are getting closer. This is exciting, isn't it? Because it's been off. It's been on. It's been off. It's on. It's now on. Yeah, and let's, let's not forget about the heavy division. It, it, it's, it's, our, it's our standout division. Mm. What happens in this division dictates how the sport is seen outside of the, outside of the sport. So it, we get the biggest fight and it produces the goods. Then it trickles down to all the other weights. We bet the sport benefits. We bring more eyes to the sport, more interest, more money, more fights. That's what, that's what it's all about. So these guys have an obligation, a duty, and a pressure to not only fight each other, but to perform. And now it's here, we're all happy. Yeah, and I think they will perform. I think both of them are going to be at their absolute best, and that means it's going to be a fantastic night of boxing. The undercard is incredible as well, by the way. We'll get to that another time. I feel like both of these guys, Alexander Usyk and Fury, have almost been in the shadows mm. in the build-up to this. We haven't seen much Tyson Fury. We get to see him today. We haven't really seen Alexander Usyk as well. It's like both of them decided, OK, I need to disappear because this is now when it gets serious. Yeah, but I, I, I almost feel that's made the fight grow a little bit we want to hear from these we want this fight even more so um, i agree with barry it's the marquee division in world boxing it always has been always will be so there is a responsibility here i look at the fight and i think it will deliver this is the first time since then so we're going to have an undisputed heavyweight champion the first in the four belt era the wbo now i mean this is history this fight is huge it gets no bigger it's funny because i spoke to tyson fury a couple of months ago and I said that to him, I was like, yeah, this is it now, you must be excited. He's like, no. I was like, stop it, you're lying, I know you, you're a historian when it comes to this sport, you are excited. And look, the heavyweight division is the marquee division, Baz, but if we're honest, up until 12 months ago, it'd been a bit of a disaster. They, we weren't seeing the best fight, the best. I feel like we only really had Joe Joyce versus Gili Zhang. Now, all of a sudden, with the involvement of Saudi Arabia, we're seeing everyone fight everyone. Yeah, well, there's a motivator there, and it's usually money. It's, and it's the same for all of us, of good, course. Good motivator. And, and, and of course, it's. But then, and, and and someone there to someone there to say, listen, I can give you what you want if you will produce the goods. But and it is about money. But ultimately, money helps path the way. And but they ultimately, they want to leave a legacy. They want to leave their name. All these guys, they get to, they get to the level now. They're all good. They're all brilliant fighters. They're all being world champions. They're still world champions. But it's about who's the number one. We still haven't got a defining number one of this era. Tyson Fury might be the best of this era, but we haven't got the, the proof. This fight gives us that proof. And that's, that's the only motivation you need for something like this. At the end of the day, they're going to win big money wherever they are. So that's done. It's there about who's proven who's the best. There you go, the Gypsy King has entered the building. I'm always sort of fascinated by his, his weight and how he looks and I always go to his jawline. And if I can see a jawline, which I'm trying to look for over my shoulder, then I know he's in shape. <laughs> and I know he's in shape. Good. And you know what? I see a jawline. I see a jawline, Tyson Fury's ready to go. He's ready. He's ready. Like, look, like Barry said there, they've, they've got all the money in the world. This is about legacy now. This is about history. This is about proving you're the best in the division. He's going to go into this fight, as is Alexander Usyk, in 110% prime physical condition. And uh, I, I cannot wait for the fight. It's the whole squad's up there as well. I see Sugar Hill Stewart's up there. Frank Warren's up there. Dev Sani, we're going to throw to Dev in a couple of moments. He's up there as well. This is it. This is the last time, I think, before he flies out to Saudi Arabia to really ramp it up. Yeah, because if you have a, a, a few words for what he looks like, you say he looks in good condition. Do you have a few words you know, if he's still as confident as he was? Because let's not forget, of all the pressure fights he's had, this is the biggest fight he's had, the pressure he's had since he boxed Klitschko in Germany, I think. This is the, the, the most pressure. Uh, even the Wilder fights. 
because this is the fight that he can. I know because it was different there because there was a there was no expectation that it is now that he has. He goes in the favourite, of course, still. But there's an expectation here that he had, didn't haven't had since that Klitschko. All right, let's get this show on the road. Tyson Fury is ready to talk as is Frank Warren. So let's throw it over to your MC for this one, Mr. Dev Sarni. Well, hello, hello. Welcome wherever you are joining us around the world. And for those celebrating, Eid Mubarak to all of those celebrating. Welcome to Morecambe here in Lancashire. Welcome to the Mazuma Stadium. And of course, this is the home of the mighty Morecambe FC and the hometown of the mighty Gypsy King sat there, the WBC and lineal world heavyweight champion Tyson Fury. We are now just under 40 days away from the biggest fight of Tyson Fury's career so far, the undisputed fight, the fight of the century. On May 18th, in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, as part of Riyadh calendar, there is an iconic, unforgettable event taking place in the iconic capital city. The unified world heavyweight champion, Oleksandr Rusik, puts his WBA, WBO and IBF heavyweight titles on the line against this man here, the WBC and long reigning lineal heavyweight champion, Tyson Fury. The two, will finally collide in a ring of fire. Well, joining us here today are uh, some key, key players in that event who are, who are making this happen. Some of them are, are the movers and shakers. Some of them will be doing the fighting, of course. I'm delighted to be joined by Hall of Fame boxing promoter Frank Warren of Queensbury Promotions. We have perhaps the hardest working manager in all of boxing right now, Spencer Brown of Gold Star, and perhaps the sweetest man in boxing in uh, Sugar Hill at the end of the table as well, all with the champion. Now, we're going to hear from everyone up here very, very shortly, but of course, before that, we need to say thank you to those in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia who are making these incredible events right now possible. So firstly, let's say thank you to the Crown Prince, Mohammed bin Salman. And of course, let's say thank you to the chairman of the General Entertainment Authority in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, His Excellency Turkey Al Al Sheikh. <laughs> okay, well, let's let's get going. Tyson, I, I just want to start with you. You are the reason that we are here. We are now, as I mentioned, under 40 days away from the fight, the undisputed fight, the fight of the century. You look in great shape. Is it all systems go? Before I start, I just want to say a massive shout out to Turkey Al Sheikh and all of everyone who's working in Saudi Arabia. Uh, Eid Mubarak to all you guys and have a fantastic, uh, fantastic day. Um, and the answer to your question is, yeah, I'm training hard, obviously. Um, I'm in fantastic shape, obviously. And I've got a massive fight going up, obviously. So I think there's, there's no room for error. There's no room for not training right or any problems. So we just got to get through it and 40 days out and feeling fantastic. And I know all boxers say the same, oh shit, like I've had a fantastic training camp, yada, yada, yada. But I actually am having a fantastic training camp and got a good team around me and everything's going to plan. Um, no complaints, working very hard. Um, got me dad in camp this time. So I got my secret weapon over there as well. Um, I got Ty Mitchell in. I got all the boys, all the girls are in camp. So we've got a full, full, uh, a full circus uh, camp. Um, so yeah, can't can't do any more really. It, it was heartbreak when the fight was postponed initially. How long did it take you to to get over that and and get going again? At first, I was a little bit depressed for the first day or so. But afterwards, like all things in life, um, I realised God's timing is impeccable, perfect. It's not late, it's not early, but it's bang on time. So it wasn't my time to fight for the championship then, but it is going to be my time on May the 18th. So um, I'm really preparing fantastic for it. Well, let's bring in Frank, uh, Frank Warren. A historic moment on May 18th in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. This is going to be quite the event, and uh, this man looks ready to go here. He does, and uh, I want to echo as well. Our thanks to His Royal, Royal Highness the Crown Prince, uh, His Excellency Turkey Al Sheikh, his, uh, and all the team who've made this happen, and all the team here at the table who've made it happen. And um, it will happen on the 18th. We've got the biggest fight of the 21st century taking place. It's never happened before. Four belts on the line. Um, and we're going to find out who the best heavyweight in the world is. 
I've got my views, and I know my views are going to be right, but it's going to be something special, something extra, extra special. And these things come along, you know, once, well, certainly in this case, on this occasion, once in a century up to as yet. So a special fight with two special undefeated fighters, two undefeated fighters, and uh, the world is going to see who is the best. I'm the best. I'm just defending my bestness against him. The, the, lineal, the lineal champion, the lineal champion and WBC champion fighting for the other three belts. And, uh, and you know what, Frank? Yeah, I read a lot of comments, people saying, oh, there's four belts. Let's just get this one clear right now. There's a lot more than four belts on the line. You got... IBO, IBF, WBO, WBA, WBC, Ring Magazine, and Lineal. So for all you motherfuckers out there thought it was four, correction, it's seven. There's seven things on the line here in this historic event. You're wrong. No, I'm not. It's eight. Because the there is the eight. Oh, the real season belt. Thank yeah, you've you. corrected. I, st I stand corrected. I was one. Eight. Right. So it's eight belts in one fight. That's got to be a record. Yeah, right? it has, without a doubt. For you sure. You have to get another cabinet, you know. I'm going to have to, for sure. Let's bring in Spencer Brown. You've uh, you've been all, all around the country with Tyson Fury in terms of the tours that you used to do, the speaking tours, and now you're his manager as well. This next stage of his career, what are you seeing from this man heading into this fight? I'm seeing a man who's uh, on a mission. He's he's never looked so good in the last couple of years, and what I'm hearing from the camera, I'm not there every day to watch everything and to see everything, but everybody's telling me he's in fantastic shape, great order. You know, he's brought his dad in, and it's very important to have your family around him. I think he'll agree with that. Um, the sugar, it's very good buzz about the camp, which is fantastic. Well, let's ask Sugar Hill on this. I mean, you are with Tyson Fury all the time now as well. Since the cut, how, how have things been? Have you had to kind of calm down a bit on, on the sparring? Like, how, how does it work? Do you, do you readdress everything? Uh for me, um, it's just watching him day to day. He hasn't really let down since the end of the last training camp before the cut. And uh, I guess pretty much for me, one of the hardest things is watching out for uh, these kind of camps when the fighter is totally ready uh, to go and just kind of pacing him to keep him ready and not overdoing it. So um, it's not that difficult, but you just have to watch. You just have to watch the fighter. The fighter will tell you everything if you watch him. And how does he compare at this point to what he did leading up to the Francis Ngannou fight? Uh, you know what? I believe the Francis Ngannou fight was just um, him having so much time off and uh, not being mentally like focused as he is for this one here. Um, you know, he was still ready for the fight. It's just a different mentality when you go in there with uh, at this level for everything, something that he's been waiting for for so long. Um, you know, you, 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 I don't want to say you dream of these things, but these are the things that actually can drive you to be a better person and to bring out your best. Uh, Spencer, and this is a question for everyone, really. Were you surprised with some of the comments that came from the USIC camp? I think Alex Krasik was actually advising you, Tyson, to, to retire as well. Did this cause surprise? Well, he would say that, wouldn't he? Because it's, it's, they've got a mountain to climb to get through and a mountain to, to chip away at. And it's not going to be easy for them at all. They've played the game. They've, you know, we've had a few comments from them in the past. Um, Tyson very quickly and very swiftly dealt with that. And I think when he cut his eye, we dealt with it very well, very quickly. We all spoke and, and, and got, the date, got the date done. So there was, there was nothing too much to moan about. But, um, yeah, he's got to go through a mountain... Uh, Usyk, and I wouldn't like to face this mountain, that's for sure. Well, Tyson, what, at the launch press conference where you uh, faced off with Alexander Usyk, he didn't say a lot at that press conference. Do you think that's him holding back or he doesn't want to get involved? What is it? He doesn't speak English, for one, so he speaks a little bit of English, but it's very difficult to speak to a encyclopedia in boxing who speaks fluent English when you speak broken English, so... I don't think you're ever going to get... You get a foreigner sitting up here with me. You get any American, any British fighter I've ever fought in nearly 20 years as boxing, no one has ever competed with me on speaking. So especially not some foreign man who speaks broken English. Um, as for all the stuff people, their camp said and all that, you know, 
this is show business, this is entertainment, this is everything. So if they don't talk about what's going on, then people lose interest and yada, yada, yada. So they've got to talk shit. It's a must. If you don't talk smack in this game, you ain't going to make it. There's a heavyweight in here, yeah, who's on his rise. And my advice to him is talk tons of smack the whole way. That's how people notice you. And then when they notice you, then you can show them your skills and do what you got to do. And that's how it's done. And as for like all of Usex's team, they're all lovely, decent people, I think. I saw his manager at, uh, over in Saudi recently. I was just having a bit of fun with him. And, but I shook his hand. And uh, he's a nice fellow, you know. He's doing the best he can for his man. Um, which, you know, Frank, Spencer, all my team are doing the best they can for their man. So, and if you don't do the best for your man, then you're a pretty shit manager or promoter. That's what I'd say. Um, but as for, like, I've seen some stuff in the media that this is really personal between me and Alexander Usek. This is not, it's not personal. It's strictly business for both fighters, you know. Um, there's a lot, lot of stuff on the line and all that, but I don't hate him. He don't hate me. He's, he's, a, he's a good good husband, good God-fearing man, so I respect him as a man, as a fighter. He's undisputed um, cruiserweight champion. He's unified heavyweight champion, so anyone would have to respect the man's achievements. Um, good fighter, you know. I've got a, a tough challenge in front of me, but I, I'm very confident in my ability, and I'm very confident that I'll beat the guy. But that's not to say he's shit just because he loses to me. Like, you know, everybody I ever beat before, even long reigning lineal champions like Vladimir Klitschko, after I beat him, everyone said, oh, he's a piece of shit, him. Kl uh, Wilder, all of these guys who I ever beat, they were all shit after I beat them. So please don't say that Alexander Rusek shit after I beat him because he's not. He's a, he's a unified heavyweight champion, undisputed cruiserweight champion. But my personal opinion is of it is we have right weight divisions for a reason and me being an encyclopedia on boxing and I've studied every heavyweight cruiserweight that's ever lived um, when the cruiserweights step up to the big boys usually they get found wanting and even the greatest cruiserweights that's ever lived Evander Holyfield when he stepped up to the big boys in Big Daddy Bowen and it's Lewis he was found wanting you can, you can beat the average big ones but you can't beat the elite big ones because size really matters and we have weight divisions for a reason and he's going to be found wanting when he fights me on May the 18th. Um, even if you look at David Hay, he was an explosive, uh, good cruiserweight and good heavyweight. And when he fought average heavyweights, he could beat them. But when he stepped up to the big boy in Klitschko, it wasn't really a contest. We look at Thomas Adamek. He was a good light heavyweight, good cruiserweight. He beat some good average heavyweights, good world contender heavyweights, stepped up to the big boys, beat. So I expect the same from um, Alexander, to be fair. Who was the other one? Um, Sultan Ibragimov. He was Olympic silver medalist. He was 20 and 0. He he was world. Uh, I think he beat Shannon Briggs for the world championship, and he he was found wanting against Vladimir Klitschko at Madison Square Garden. So I could just keep going on and on and on and on. Let's use Johnny Nelson for instance. Johnny was very he was an undefeated cruiserweight when he was cruiserweight, but every time he stepped up heavyweight, he got bashed. So there is. It's well, facts. It's facts. I'm not, I'm not slagging anybody off, but what I'm saying is these are facts. And if anybody wants to go check my boxing history, go do it. I've studied this game all my life, and you cannot prove it wrong. This is my time, my destiny, my era, and my generation. Facts. Let's, uh, let's talk a little bit of tactics. Let's bring in Sugar Hill here. Sugar, from, from your perspective, the other heavyweights who have tried to beat Alexander Usyk, Daniel Dubois, Anthony Joshua, Derek Chisora, Chaz Witherspoon, all of these guys... Limited ability. But what did they do limited. wrong? Limited. What did they limited do wrong? ability. They tried the best with their own ability, but it's very limited and Sugar will take over. <laughs> There's not really much for me to say with Tyson, uh, you know, knowing it all. So, uh, no, but just listen. Alexander Usyk, like Tyson said, is a great champion. Cruiserweight, he's won all these fights in his life. Um, and a lot of it is due to, you know, his athleticism and things of that nature. But he can think. So he's, out, he's able to outthink these guys. Whereas they may come in and think one or two things. He's thinking three and four. So, uh, and, you know... Tyson is the same way. Tyson's thinking five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So uh, it's, it's, it's one of those chess matches. But I definitely agree with Tyson. He's the bigger man. 
um, the bigger skilled man, and you have a smaller man with those same skills, or um, yeah, we'll just say with the same skills, <laughs> and uh, that that big man that big man is going to win all day, you know. Yeah. And and also, <laughs> everybody underestimates Tyson's punching power. Everybody, I don't understand why. I mean, it I stops. don't know about everybody. Wilder don't, does well, he? he doesn't. <laughs> no, but I'm talking about you. Talk about a lot of people, and they just don't seem to understand it. I mean, and you're right. Everybody who does get stepped in the ring, they find out about it. There's no doubt about that. And I think that's going to be a, another telling point in this fight, a big telling point for him. I've got a fun fact. Everybody who was supposed to be a non-puncher in my career has given me trouble. And everybody who was supposed to be a dynamite puncher have been all right against. So I better fucking watch me boots. I'm here. Because he's noted as a total non-puncher, but I've been put over by a few non-punchers, Dad, aren't I? Noted non-punchers have put me over before, but the big ones, the big punchers in history, I've, I've been found wanting to keep me nailed down. So that's a little bit of a fun fact for everybody. That's a fact. That's a fact. And he's, he's, he's definitely a tough man, isn't he? Big puncher, weak jaw. Don't take it as a lot. Yes. Well, Big John's suggesting that Usyk has potentially a weak jaw. Uh, Frank? No. No? You need to get your facts right, too. He's got a cast iron jaw. He's a big puncher. Fuck Nigel Ben. We ran the tash. And I, I, I put that to the putting that much effort into knocking someone out, rah, leave the self open to a counter crack where the man who don't punch as much is, is using his boxing and moving and he's not leaving himself wide open to get knocked out. Exactly. Frank, you've talked about an Achilles heel for Alexander Rusik as well. Do you want to tell us more about that? Oh, I've, I mean, I've looked, at, uh, I've sort of looked at a lot of these fights going back to the amateur days. And he is a bit of a crybaby when it comes to getting caught to the body. He cries to the referee a lot. And for me, that, was a, that always was, uh, if you want to use the phrase, an Achilles heel or an Achilles body. That's what it, what it is. And he doesn't like it. Doesn't Factual, he? that is, as yeah, well. Because he, the only time he's been put over is with body shots. Yeah. Better be have dropped him with a body yeah, shot. Yeah. And um, I think it was the Polish guy. What was the Polish cruiserweight called? Um, was he called Goblaki or something Lomaki. like that? Something like that. I think he dropped him with a yeah. body shot as well. Yeah. So Frank's he, definitely correct there. And I've, I've sort of looked at that, and I looked at that before we, before we made the fight with Dubois, and Dubois, Dubois definitely hurt him to the body, irrespective of what went on. He doesn't like it to the body, that's for sure. And for me, the biggest exponent of exploiting a boxer's weakness is the professor here, and that's what he does. He, he finds that he's... If anybody's going to exploit it, it'll be Tyson. He's got he's got the mental capacity to do that and keep doing what he has to do. And 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 I I know uh, you know people have asked about predictions. That I genuinely genuinely believe that Tyson will win this fight in an explosive start. And is that is that because we talked about size earlier as well? Is that because he's going to be so much bigger? Can you give us a bit more colour oh, on I, the prediction? I, I think he is. I mean, you only got to look at look at both of them. He is bigger, but the other guy, he's been heavyweight what now for three years, uh -huh. so he's grown into that. He, he's grown into it. He's carrying the weight, and obviously, you know, if you're struggling at cruiser weight, he's going to be more comfortable. But he's dealing with somebody as, as Tyson said himself. He's natural. He's a naturally big guy. He's a he's a he's he's like. In some ways, like um, like Usyk, that they got good, very good, good boxing brains. But I just think Tyson is he is the best heavyweight in the world. There's no doubt about that. And everyone's going to talk about the last fight. Good fighters on an off night win fights. They don't see. He's not sitting here today saying it was an off night and that's why I got beat. He had an off night and he won. And that's what good fighters do. They come through it and he comes through it and he is. And he is. He is, in my opinion, in my lifetime in boxing, and I, since I've been doing this, he's been the best at it. He's been, he's been involved in the best heavyweight fight I've ever seen live, which was that third fight. Without fight that. Yeah. And now you know, against um, Wilder. By the way, Wilder was undefeated heavyweight champion for six years and the biggest puncher. And you, gain, you look at his boxing brain, Tyson's boxing brain, that second fight worked it out, what he needed to do, and absolutely done the job. And that's what he does. He's such a, that's why he's such an intelligent, good, super good fighter. And I genuinely do believe 
I believe this other fella, by the way, he's he's not you know he's no he's he's not gonna he's not just showing up. He's he probably feels in his heart he may have seen a couple of flaws in Tyson's last performance, and he'd be working on that, no doubt about it, like any fighter would do. But at the end of the day, he's in with somebody who is extra special, and I think we're going to see a, I think we're going to see an explosive, extra special fight. Well, Tyson, we know when it comes to critics, you don't listen. It's water off a duck's back. But I want to bring in Spencer here because you're, you're having to see people criticise Tyson Fury, say some outrageous stuff out there as well. Yeah, I mean, how do you take to that? It's uh, When you're personally involved with somebody, it's a bit upsetting. And it can get you really on your nerves. And, uh, but like Tyson says to me, just ignore it. It's water off a duck's back. But, I mean, I watched yesterday, I watched... I don't know, 20 or 30 different people with different opinions. This fight is causing, is causing massive, ma massive different opinions for everybody. It's, um, it's going to be so, so much of a spectacular... What they've got planned for this fight is the fight, but we've got a great undercard. It's, it's going to be spectacular. And, I mean, they've even brought the, uh, their own song out today, yeah. the Ring of Fire song. So if, if, you're, if you're on the internet, have a look at it. It's unbelievable. They're pushing all the boats out for this, for this fight. It will be tremendous, fantastic, stupendous. It will be unbelievable. And Turkey Al Sheikh and his team have done such a good job. And uh, they, they do really think a lot of Tyson. They love him. So, um, no doubt about that. Honestly, yeah, you know, the relationship he's got with Turkey Al Sheikh is second to none. You know, he was the first one through the door and he'll probably be the last one out the door. So, you know... The, the, there's a there's a line that they want to follow, and there's there's you know they want to get more fights to come, and uh, Tyson's mentioned them, but we go one fight at a time. Uh, I think Alexander Usyk might have um, underestimated Tyson a little bit on on that last performance, but if if you see him in the gym, his punch power, everything's gone up. He looks he looks out of this world, he really does. Fantastic shape, um, his head's. He's very focused on this fight, which I've noticed a lot. Really focused. So we'll see on the night. And uh, we'll see who wins. And uh, we'll see what everybody's got to say then. All the, uh, all the great uh, boxers and pundits and all these people who are... What I've seen, you know, a lot of them don't give Tyson a chance. I don't know where they're coming from. On that past performance, on that last performance. But let's see. Let's see what they've got to say after this. Hopefully, they get chinned in around then, eh? <laughs> yeah. Well, Make that's what they're right. saying. You know, that's what they're all. You know, some of them I'm, I'm quite amazed. But uh, let's see afterwards. And uh, like Tyson said, it's a boxing match. The best man will win, and we'll shake hands afterwards. I think if I didn't train at all for this camp, I just come in at like 25 stone and sank maybe 15 pints of Peroni <laughs> beforehand, and then the next day going there. What's he going to do? Jib and jab me around? Do you know what I mean? He, listen, take nothing away with him, but he couldn't do anything without Chisora. We all saw that fight. Let's Correct. not be eludent with him. Yeah. He, it was a 50-50 fight. Could have won either way. So, late, so not unless he's come on yeah. at 38, 39 year old in the last over two years, like leaps and bounds. And oh, I, I, I thought the Joshua fight was very close as well. I, so. I thought the Joshua fights were very close. He came out with a lot of marks and, and uh, you know... Um, Set the uh, second fight was. Second. Second fight, especially. Yeah. yeah. So. But uh, and the other thing is, you're saying 15 Peronis. You're on the Furiosity now. <laughs> yeah, so but what there's no alcohol in that. Uh, uh, Frank. Got no chance. So if I'm going in for a real ding dong, I need at least 15 pints of Peroni. <laughs> at least. Tyson, I was watching a, an interview with Alexander Rusick the other day, and he said that Vladimir Klitschko has reached out and given him some advice. But the well, advice... that'd be handy advice: how to lose <laughs> the Gypsy King. <laughs> <laughs> How can Vlad, my old pal Vlad, give anybody any advice? Because he would have used it himself, wouldn't he, if he had any advice or any idea how to beat me. It was a, an absolute one-sided boxing lesson I give to old Vlad. Yeah. And I believe it's Vlad cool. was a, um, a very good, good champion, just like this guy is. He's the best of his generation. And I said, didn't I? I said, if I can't beat old Vlad, I must be useless. And I'll say it again. If I can't beat Usyk, I'm no good, clearly. That's, that's, that's your headline. If Tyson Fury can't beat Usyk, Tyson's no good. End of. I'm not going to pull any punches. It is what it is. If I can't beat Usyk, I'm no good. Say I'm no good. And then I'll get a rematch of him and say I'm no good again. If I lose again, <laughs> what more is there to do? But if I beat him, I beat another man. Great. Fantastic. On to the next one.
But if you do beat him, you get all those belts you talked about, the eight belts, the undisputed. What will that mean? Yeah, to I'll add them to the 25 I've already got, shall I? I've actually promised His Excellency Turkey Al Sheikh that when I win all these belts, I give every one to him as a present. Let's get a final predictions from it. I mean, look, everyone's going to pick Tyson Fury to win, but give us a bit of colour on it. Sugar Hill, how's this fight going to play out? Knock out. Simple. Yeah. It is. Early, late? Don't know. Okay. Just when it happens, knock out. May 18th, we'll find out. Uh, Spencer? Knock out. Okay. Eight. Within eight. Okay, we've got a round out of Spencer. Let's yeah. see if we'll get a round out of Frank Warren. I think, well, you should ask your, I think you should ask his dad as well. We'll bring in Big John Fury. Frank, yeah. let me just get, get it from yourself first. Knock out. Knock out. going to give me a round like? When he catches him. <laughs> He'll go. Big John, <laughs> what do you think? Just match. It's going to be a boxing match between two Greek technicians. Could end up a bit of a boring type of match. <laughs> We've reduced the tickets now, so buy one get one free. You've got a land. You don't you Thank you, John. Thank you very much, John. And I'm going to go for Usak to knock me out in the first round. Fuck it. I'm going to go for it. Why not? There you go. We've got everyone's predictions, including Tyson's very curious prediction there. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us. We're going to do some photos down the front, and uh, we'll see you May 18th for the big one. Lovely. We certainly will see you May 18th. Uh, all the predictions there suggesting that Tyson Fury will knock out Alexander Usyk. I think this is going to be, like John Fury said, a chess match. Not a boring one, though, so make sure you do watch it on the zone because it will be exciting, Barry. It's an interesting presser there. Tyson Fury, you know, confident as always. That's just Tyson Fury, though. That's just how he always is. Yeah, but he's also coming up with some, you know, some factual and historical um, cases of, of why a cruiserweight, a big... A, a good big one always beats a good little one. Yeah. And he gave some good, good examples of that, but not quite factually correct, though, because I, I would say Hollerfield did beat Riddick Bowen the, the one time, so, and then, so there, were, there were some errors there. But I still also think that you know, if he's at his best, we've said that if he's at his best, I find he's the most adaptable heavyweight we've had for a, such a long time. If he's at his very, very best, then he's very hard to beat. And I can't see even Uzik, as clever as he is, how he can beat him. But we're not sure if we have Fury at his best anymore. I, it's been a long time since that stellar performance in February 2020, the second Wilder fight, where he totally dominated. The third fight was a great fight, but he made it more of a fight. I think that, that was a stellar performance, was the second performance there. And we haven't seen that brilliance since then, I wouldn't have thought. Yeah, I was going to ask that, actually. It's a very good point you make, Baz. Uh, Darren, what would be the best Tyson Fury performance you've ever seen? I feel like there's, there's two or three that everyone points to, the Vladimir Klitschko one, the second... Deontay Wilder fight, maybe even the second Chisora fight. I thought it was really good in that as well. well. I think the most important fight, aside from this, because I do feel this is the most important fight for Tyson Fury because of what's on the line, you'd have to say Klitschko because that really, that, you know, that, that fulfilled his dream of becoming a world champion. Look, I, I feel almost like this was an opportunity for Tyson Fury and the team to let everybody know, don't sleep on me. I'm still a very, you think, very you think dangerous people man. are? But I, I do after the Nganu fight, the, yeah. the Nganu performance. The I think a lot of people, well. the mm. cut. I think a lot of people think you know the, the best days are behind Tyson Fury. They've sat down there, the whole team, just to let everybody know. Look, I'm on this. I fancy this. There's still there's still some big performances left in me, and he's going to need one. 
the old saying is a good big one will always be a good little one. And that could be the case here. The size of Tyson Fury in comparison. They never say great, though, do they? It's always good. Yeah. yeah. Like, well, whereas I thought Usyk's a great little one. I don't think Usyk's a... Would you say, would you say small. Tyson Fury's a great big one? I think Tyson Fury has shown us that he's a great big one. I guess that's yeah, where the question marks are. Mm. Is he still a great big But also, Holofield was a great cruiserweight. Mm. And really, Bo was a, was a phenomenal... A really good heavyweight. You know, we're going to put him as a great. He had potential to be great, but at that time wasn't. So it's the same sort of scenario. You could argue with that. The, the thing with Fury is the old Fury. The sort of the old Fury. You no know, pre pre the second fight against Wilder, the mover, the more negative fighter. That's the style that gives Usyk all the problems. The more aggressive Tyson Fury, flatter on his feet, looking to land more heavier shots. You know, might have more of an effect if he lands, but that plays into Usyk's hands where he can slip and counter and come back with, 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 with combinations and flurries. So it's how he... Can he go back to being the more light-footed, more adaptable fight that we've seen you know, pre-2020? Obviously, look, we're here and we're focusing on Tyson Fury. Rightly so, right? This is the Fury press conference. I mean, Alexander Usyk's the other man in the other corner. Mm. I mean, can we not say that maybe he looked a little past his best against Daniel Dubois for a few rounds? I was just about to jump in, actually, and talk about Usyk, the, the other side of this, because what makes this so intriguing, in my opinion, is that greatness that you said. He is a great fighter, but at a level so far in this division. He could become, after, if he was to beat Tyson Fury, could become one of the greatest to ever grace the squared circle. Agreed. You know, he could, yeah. if he was to beat Fury... Double undisputed. It would be incredible. Yeah. You know, we could be on the brink of witnessing greatness here. That's why, for me, it's so intriguing because there is that old saying, a, a good big one will always be a good little one. And if that is the case, then Fury wins this fight. But what if Usyk was to win this fight? And he's done it on the road. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the top of road warriors, he's, he's the epitome of that. Every, everything he's won has been away from home. He went to a Ukrainian, before the conflict, the Ukrainian went to Russia. To, no, to unify, to, to be the undisputed champion. That, yeah. that, that's unbelievable amount. That's unbelievable. It really is. I would say, though, I don't think the, the Dubai performance was poor. I think that was typical, Uzik. I don't, think he was en I don't think he was ever under any pressure. I don't, I just don't. I think he is patient. He never dominates early in the fights, ever. Even as a cruiser, he never dominates early. Tony Bell, you. Yeah, Similar. He, he makes you work harder than you want to work. And then, then when you slow down, the gaps appear and he picks up the points in the later rounds. And as a cruiserweight, he could stop you. The heavyweight doesn't have that same concussive power. But he makes you work hard, tires you out, works you up, but always keeps the fight close. And then he goes to work in the second half. Yeah, we are going to hear from Frank Warren and hopefully Tyson Fury as well. I can see Tyson Fury getting ready to do all the world's media. He will join us. I've been promised that he will. It'll be good to see him. I want to see him up close just to see the cut. <laughs> I'm very intrigued to see how that cut's healed. Or not, because I mean, both of you guys would have had cuts before. How, how long does it take from getting that cut for it to heal and then for you being allowed to spar again? I'm smiling here because I'm probably the wrong person to ask. I, I never got cut. Oh, look at him. Nah. Lucky. I didn't that, get it. That's, why, that's why you're so pretty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Go over there. Give, give it. Go away. Bad the, the truth is, the truth is, there is no real answer because every cut can be different. Mm. Oh, no. How, it's a bad one, though, we saw with Fury. Well, it looks it's a bad. really bad yeah. one. And it's, it's how it's stitched is very important. I, you want to be stitched on the inside and the outside. And, and, that, that's, and, and so you've got, that has a chance to heal. If it's not done correctly... Hold on two seconds. OK, I don't know if you guys just heard that. Dev Sani did say we are going to hear from His Excellency Turkey, Hello. Al Sheikh. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Hello, hello, Frank. Hello, champ. Hello, Spencer. Hello, coach. We are ready in Riyadh and we are waiting. I will come tomorrow to London. This is the biggest fight ever. All the world waiting for 25 years now. And we will see in the 18th of May in Riyadh the undisputed fighter winner. Tomorrow will come with the belt. And I am ready, and all the kingdom is ready, and all the world will see the biggest fight ever. Today, we will start the campaign for the pay-per-view and the ticket and the song of the fight. And there is a lot of surprise. Tyson know what is in my mind and the map for us together. Yes. We want Tyson for five, seven, ten fights more. You he talk, know, you, talk. You, you know, you know, you are the, the most uh, beautiful diamond in the boxing fighters. 
You know how I see you. You know how I see you. And from my position, I need to be in the position fair between you and Ozik yeah. and have a good fight. Yeah. But you know what you, ha what you have in my heart. Yes, I, know. I see you one of the best fighters in the generation. And I am thinking we will have big relationship next in boxing field. Perfect. You know, you are now the most expensive fighter <laughs> in the century. Turkey, I will not, might be listening. Stop it. I will not tell the numbers, but you know how much you get yes. for each fight. Yes. And you deserve it. Thank you very much, my brother. I really appreciate and, you. And, and we are waiting. And we are waiting. And I miss your father a lot. <laughs> Say to him hi yeah. and your family and take care until the fight. Good luck and I'll see you soon, brother. I'll see you soon. We will surprise the world. We will surprise the world. 100%. <clears throat> Me and my generation, this is the first and disputed. We see it live because I was young when the last uh, undisputed. I am not like Frank. He see four or five times. <laughs> <undisputed>. <laughs> I remember, I remember. See you, see you. You know, you know, I respect the English fighters and I see the English fighters as the better, best fighters in the world. Yes. Thank you so much and see you in the 18th of May and see you, Frank and Spencer, soon, tomorrow or after tomorrow in London, inshallah. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Thanks, Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Your Excellency and Eid Mubarak. And the official Ring of Fire there, song is released today. His Excellency Turkey Al Sheikh. Obviously, it sounds like Tyson Fury is his favourite. <laughs> if I'm AJ, I'm not very happy right now. <laughs> <laughs> it does. It, like it does. But you know, again, what he's doing for boxing is incredible. These big shows are all happening because of his involvement. Yeah. And, you know, Tyson Fury has played a massive, massive role in, in you know, helping. The, the boxing over there, you know, he's a showman. You see you hear him behind the mic, he really is. He, he plays his role so well. I, I would just say, uh, oh, I, I think, think you meant Brit British, I think, 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 think you meant British, not English. Do, do we have a mic? There he is. Here he is, give him the mic, let him, let him get in. Let's get in, let's get in. How are you, mate? Big man, big man. How are you doing, Ty's good? How are you, good? Yeah, good, still alive, which is a good Looking problem. good, looking good as well. He's trying. Looking lean. Lean as a bean. Yeah, how's the eye, can I have a quick? Yeah, it's all right, the eyes, what it is. It's, it's, it's okay, isn't it? When did you, how long have you been sparring? I've not stopped. Really? Yeah. yeah. I had a, about four or five weeks away from the sparring and then... Everything. Straight into it? Yeah. Straight into it. Um, how, how have you been in preparation for this? Obviously, look, me and you spoke before and yeah. I think you were a bit bullish. You was like, you know, undisputed, it's just another fight. I feel like listening to you there, yeah. It's almost like, no, no, this is it now. This is the real deal. This is a chance to have everything. Listen, as these guys know, every fight's very important. You know, there's no easy ones. There's, there's no more harder ones than others. Everyone's as, as important as the next one. Um, and this is just another one where I've got to be on me A game and all the belts are on the line and yada, 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 all that other stuff as well. Um, a lot yeah. of money as well. Totally. Obviously, <laughs> there's a lot of money on the line. At this level, there's always going to be a lot of money on the line. Um, so yeah, we just got to do what we got to do. Do what I do best, and that's it. And that'll be good enough to beat him. And if he doesn't, if he beats me, like I said, I'll shake his hand and say, "Fair play. Do you want a beer?" That's it. What more can I say as a man? <laughs> Making all of excuses and say I lost because of whatever. Just do what you got to do. That's it. But you seriously do what you want to do, and that's interesting how you're going to approach the fight because you've been more aggressive recently. Right. But the brilliance of you, no, win, no. I thought in the first, in the first while well, the fight was yeah. against Critchlow was the mover, the dancer, the adaptability. Yeah. Do you think that causes Uzik more problems? or do you think? I'm not sure because he's a smaller man, a lighter man, isn't he? So yeah. the bigger you are, the less advantage you have against the smaller heavyweights who can move agilely. And then they're not really big heavyweights, so the light and they've got agile over me, where the bigger the heavyweight is, I've got the ability over them. Yes. So, yeah. It's um, not you, sure. Would you say this is the biggest fight of your career to date? You've had some big fights already, but would you say this is the number one fight of your career? Depends and also, on what for. How does it differ? What, what, how, what are we bargaining it on here? Are we bargaining on how much money? Career, or career, the final legacy. How many people's going to watch it or what? Are no, we going to... For, for you personally, 
for me, the biggest night in history will always be for me when I climbed Everest against Klitschko in Germany. Nothing will ever top that. Yeah. No matter the money, and then nothing. For nine years. Nothing will ever, 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 ever top climbing Everest against that undefeated monster no one could beat. No one gave me a prayer and beat him. Yeah, I was true, just a loud true. mouth brick one, huh? It was going to go over and get smashed. <laughs> How does that fight differ to this fight? The <clears throat> build up, the occasion, the pressure? Um, there's no pressure. You know, I'm going there to get paid and get laid, as I always say. Um, it's a boxing fight. I come out of my mother's room fighting and I'll die fighting. Um, and that's it. There's no pressure. It's a boxing fight. You know, it's, um, it's what I do best. It's like putting like a dolphin in the water. It's what I do. You know, even at 30 stone, I still do it. It's, it's what I do best. It's what I've been born and bred to do. And it's what God's plan was for me. And, you know, I can talk as much smack as I want to get people interested in. When it comes down to brass taxes, whoever's the better man on the night will win. Whoever's got the better game plan, whoever feels good on the night. It's not even who's had the best camp, because that sometimes go out the window a couple of days before. It's whoever, has, whoever feels good on the night, whoever has the better game plan will win the fight. That's and it. I always feel, having watched you, I always feel that like you do best when You're the it is a big dog. assignment. Yeah. yeah well, it was a big assignment. Yeah. Vladimir Klitschko, as you said, no one yeah. gave you a prayer. You went there and you became the heavyweight champion of the world. The yeah. first Wilder fight, maybe even the second Wilder fight. Yeah, yeah. And the second Wilder fight performance was, I think, the best Tyson Fury we've seen. There's been a lot of good fights in my career coming through and, you know, um, on the on the uh, rice, the top, and even as a world champion. And, the fights that I was maybe supposed to lose or whatever, and like I just said to you before, the, the ones that people think 50-50 fights are the ones they get up for. Yeah. Like people who are beaten in the past, I don't really get up for them. They don't turn me on. Do you know what I mean? I've got to be turned on. Lots of foreplay to get into these fights, literally. There's a lot of um, foreplay going on this one. <laughs> yeah. So this type of fight gets me going. I've never really, my juices haven't been flowing since Wilder 2. I wasn't even interested in Wilder 3, to be honest, because yeah. I already spanked him in the fight before, and nobody wanted to see it for the third time. Although it turned out to be one of the great, greatest heavyweight fights ever, one of them, yeah. Yeah. I wasn't really up for it, do you know what I mean? But this time, against Usek, I'm up for it, because there's a lot on the line, a lot to prove, a lot to lose, whatever. Uh, honestly? Yeah. Do you have one eye on a fight after this? Are you, have no, you thought about no. AJ at all? I, AJ's an old bum, in my opinion. Um, he's an old sausage old dosser. That's what I think he is. And he's proved that many, many times. And let's not mistake, he tried to beat this little man twice and got the head punched off him twice. Did anyone see that? I'm not sure if you was there or whoever. Did we all see that? Yeah, we all we saw there, it. Yeah. All there. So, not even in the conversation. Mm. Although, listen, you heard the man on the phone there, didn't you? About me being the most expensive fighter ever. <laughs> yeah. Facts. HMRC is going to have me for that. <laughs> However, um, that it's just facts, you know. Oh, people say, oh, you'll earn a lot of money for AJ. I learned him a lot of money for Nganu. And Dylan White and Derek Chazor and everybody. Do you know what I mean? It's not... If I beat... Well, when I beat you, so let's just say that. It's... Everything's been done. Everything's been done. Um, undefeated, undisputed. Beat the man who beat the man who beat the man. Well, that's me. Um, and then I can think about beating up old Osses after that, like AJ and that. What is, yeah, exactly. What is the plan after that? Because then you've, you've reached this, you're only at the summit, but then yeah. you've beat every challenger yeah. that's been given yeah. to you then. I'll, I'll fight this guy. Uh, I've got a two-fight deal with him, so I'll fight him in uh, May, and then I'll fight him again in... Um, there you go. I'll fight him again in uh, the Riyadh season opens again. And then after that, and next year, early next year, I'd like to do a, a Joshua fight over there and maybe a rematch over here at Wembley, so... Oh, nice. Yeah, it's been a while since I boxed at Wembley last time. But <laughs> Happy you mentioned that fighting here, because obviously, you know, you've got the big fans here. Uh, a lot of you, you, you sold out You sold out the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium yeah. against Chisori. You've done big numbers against Dillian White. 94,000, biggest 94, ever. 94,000, there you go, right? Yeah. Bigger than Carl Frotch. Way you won't be happy. Frotch. won't be happy about that. Did you miss fighting over here in front of that crowd? <sighs> Honestly? Yeah. I'm a high-paid escort. I go where the money is. Yeah. And if I was boxing in, in here, in front of four people, but I'm getting paid a shit ton of money, guess what I'm going to do? You're going to fight here. Or I'm going to go box in front of 200,000 people for free. Come on. Mm. Prize fighter. I pr fight for yeah. prizes. And if I didn't, then I'd be an amateur boxer getting punched in the face for free. So and that, that left me almost a 17 years ago. But Sir sure. Tyson Fury. For sure. Sir Tyson Fury to be knighted. Before I don't we know about that, all that sirs. I already said what I oh, wanted. Said, Emperor yeah. of the North. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I want. None of that, sir, and all that MBE and all that I know, shit. I know you don't Emperor like that. of the North. Just before you That's let you go, when do you go to Saudi? Um, when do I go to Saudi? When do you fly out? Probably about... I've not got anything set in stone, mm. but when we feel like it, if that makes any sense at all. Yeah, yeah. 
it's probably the, two, three weeks before, maybe. I don't know. Last time I was over there, I've been I've acclimatised in a week before. I've acclimatised in two weeks, some days, ten days, whatever. So whenever we get finished up training here and that, so yeah. I love this version of Tyson Fury. He's in good spirits. Yeah, yeah. Get up. Good luck to you, Tyson. There you go. <laughs> so it should be a trend now, that, shouldn't it? Yeah. Get, Get up! up. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Thank you. Top man. Cheers. Thank you very much. That's a very Sugar Hill Steward comes in. There you go. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. They want me on the other side. They Let's want you on this side. Okay, they want you on this side. Let's go around. Go around. We can we can do what we want here. All right, go on. How does Tyson free be Alexander? They make it all sound easy. You're the brains that has to kind of put this plan together. You know how good Alexander Usyk is. You've studied and watched him. Is it as easy as they make it sound? Uh, who is they, first of all? It's uh, it's Spencer, it's Frank, it is Tyson Fury himself. Even myself, when I just Even said knockout. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, you know, all of it is just, is, is mostly technical stuff. Mm. But looking through the technical stuff, just not to bore everybody, I'll just say knockout. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Because that's what we're searching for. We're searching for a knockout. And uh, like you said, I mean, obviously they're boxers, they're going to be boxing. Mm. But... Still just looking for that knockout, but it takes certain moves and different things to happen in the ring that's, uh, they're not orchestrated. So you have to find them, you have to know when and what's going to happen, uh, set things up, and then, and then you can get the knockout. It's not just going in there landing one big punch, definitely not. I'm, I'm guessing we'll see that on the front foot though, Tyson Fury dominating from the center of the ring. I don't know, you might just sit, sit back and box and let him run into a punch. There's different ways to get knocked out. Yeah, true, true. Body shots as well. Yeah, Obviously, body we, shots, we, we've yeah, been shots. speaking about that a lot. Everybody's mentioned it. Yeah. The potential weakness around Usyk's body. Is that yeah. going to be a target? Uh, I mean, it, it's definitely uh, something that's a fact. But is that the number one target? No. no right, okay. uh, there, there's many more targets on the body than just one body shot. Yeah. It's going to make the difference in a fight. Do you, do you see those early rounds quite important for Tyson? Because Usyk sort of works his way into a contest, doesn't he? He doesn't do too much tries to put the pressure on you in those early rounds, make you work hard. Do you, see, do you feel that there's a chance there for you to get in first and put more pressure on him? Uh, the the pressure is going to be when Tyson gets in that ring and is able to control that ring. That's where the pressure is going to be at. I mean physical. That is physical pressure. Okay, yeah, okay. You don't have to touch a man to be physically, yeah. uh, to be a big physical presence in there. Tyson's a big man, yeah. and he knows how to cut that ring off and move you the way he wants to move you. And... Uh, you get in there with him and see how it feels. I'm in there <laughs> oh, enough. Okay, man. I can remember when we first started working together for the second Wilder fight, and he didn't really quite understand it. But as those years have gone, and me and him in the ring, it makes it more difficult for me to even get around that ring because he knows he knows how to move you around. He knows his ring presence and yeah. his general in the ring. How do you erase, or maybe you don't have to, the Francis and Garnu performance? Do you have to mentally kind of just get rid of that? It was a bad day in the office, and we move on. Or do you almost look at it as it was just? Almost like an exhibition fight, and it wasn't nothing serious. How, what, do you, what do you do there? Uh, I, I'm just remembering it because you said something about it now. <laughs> okay. And because it's, I was asked gone. about it earlier, yeah. uh, the same with, with Tyson. I mean, you have good days, bad days in the gym. Uh, and for, never mind the gym, just in life. Mm. And you don't think about those bad days all the time. True. Those days help you grow and, and make you a better person. So uh, I live that way. Tyson lives that way. And, and for me and him, uh, we're on the same page. Uh, I mean, you know it happened, but you don't remember it. You don't dwell on it. Um, yeah, you just move on and you make yourself better. And, and here we are, better. How, how does it work in the gym with yourself and his dad, John Fury? The, the, the dynamic dynamics there. Who, who's in charge? Who does the majority of the work? Everybody's working together. It's not necessarily for me saying who's in charge and things like that. Uh, it, it's a team. It's always been a team. And uh, Tyson loves his father around. It, it brings and does something different for him. Right. And, you know, I'm happy, and my job is to make sure that Tyson does what he's supposed to do, Tyson's happy, and, and everything else runs according to, to our game plan. Right. And that's, that's the most important thing. So uh, if, if you have pieces in a puzzle that don't fit, then obviously it doesn't make sense. But all these pieces make sense. They've always made sense. Uh, they've been a part of each other's lives, should I say Since more? Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> Uh, you know, and, and that's just a different dynamic. His brothers, they all bring something different, you know, from being around him and, and, and knowing him more than I know him. Where were they stand in your career, in your career, your personal career, where, you know, I know the Wilder, you know, the, the tactics you brought, you brought in for the Wilder second fight, no one believed that could be done. From, I'm from doing the same one for this one, but go on. Well, but, yeah, but where would this stand compared to that? Would this be the, the, the ultimate for you? Listen, uh... It, it all depends on the opponent and, and what's at stake. And, uh, you know, 
the build up. I mean, it was a big build up for the Wilder fight. You're facing the biggest puncher in the yeah, world. Sure, You're facing the biggest puncher in the world, and you got knocked down in the 12th round. Almost got knocked out, and now the game plan is to go right to him. It's something so, like that. So, the so that 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 fight in itself was just something, you know, different than what you have here with Alexander Usyk. But with this, for your, for your personal like preference, for your for your pride, will this top that? It depends on how the knockout is. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's, it's a good point he makes, though, Sugar, isn't it? Because, I mean, obviously all the talk is about Tyson Fury becoming undisputed, and, and rightly so, right? The focus will always be on the fighters. But for you, I mean, in terms of what you've done so far, you have the chance to be the trainer that got Tyson Fury or any fighter to undisputed everywhere. The biggest moniker trophy in boxing, you, you've got the chance to be that guy. That must mean a lot to you, no? Uh, I mean, when you guys are saying it, then I start thinking about it. But for me, I'm really not thinking that much into it. It's not about me. Mm. It's, it's about Tyson. My job is to make Tyson Fury win and win in an electrifying fashion, sensational, you know, knockout, all of that. That's my job. So for me, seeing him excited and, and the people that cheer for him, or even the ones that don't cheer for him, that are not cheering for him because of what he does, that's excitement for me. That's what makes me glow. Uh, on the inside. It's not for me getting the accolades of that. Uh, I, I was taught by Emmanuel, and Emmanuel's job was to do his job. Mm. And, and I'm still from that old cloth of, listen, I have a job to do, it's not about me. If, if it was about me, I'd still be fighting. <laughs> but I'm not, so my job is to, to see that he succeeds and that he's happy, that's, that's what I was hired to do. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm just happy doing my job. And so far, so good. Uh, final one, bit of a tough question, you don't have to answer if you don't want to. What's so good about Alexander Usyk? Like when you watch him, again, you're a student of the game, you study it. When you look at someone like Alexander Usyk, what he's achieved as an amateur, as a pro so far, what does he do so well? Uh, I touched on it earlier. What, what Alexander Usyk does very well is think mm. and, and creates things in the ring. And um, like you said, some fighters are power punches and that's all they can do. They're looking for the one punch only one way. They don't have any other options. Alexander Usyk has a lot of options. Uh, he comes in with two, three, four options, you know, and he can go through those options mid, mid round, same as Tyson. Which That's makes what makes it, so it even good. better. So uh, who's going to outthink the other person and uh, make them fall into the trap? And for me, obviously, I favor Tyson Fury because uh, I know what he can do and I know the things that we worked on and I know those, those things are very, very highly effective. I love it. I love it. Sugar, really appreciate you giving us some time. Thank you very, very much. I know you've got a very, very busy few weeks coming up. Um, hopefully, though, you've got some time to watch this fight coming up. Devin Haney versus Ryan Garcia. Big one for the WBC 140-pound strap coming your way on the zone. We had great fights in the amateur, no doubt. We need to fight. Hey, we're good fighters. Let's Live on DAZN Worldwide, April 20th, Devin Haney versus Ryan Garcia. These two have been going back and forth since the amateur days. Two generational talents, the world at their feet. Let's make the fight happen now. This one is going to be a grudge match. Set to ignite Devin the Dream Haney, living the dream. Multiple world champion, undefeated. I am the man. It's time for me to show the world how great I really am. Ryan Garcia. Lightning fast, explosive, unmissable, going all in. This is the year I shocked the world. A world championship is on the line, but only one can wear the crown. This is something that comes along every now and then in generation. I'm telling you, it's special. This one counts. Live on DAZN Worldwide, April 20th. You want some real fight? You can fight me. Look at this schedule coming up. Um, it doesn't get better than this, does it? I mean, Devin Haney versus Ryan Garcia uh, Saturday, April 20th. That there is something special, that one. This fight's been in the making for years. It finally happens. Obviously, Devin Haney, the current WBC super lightweight champion. And then we move to the 168-pound division. Canelo Alvarez hasn't fought a fellow Mexican since he fought Julio Cesar Chavez. He fights one now, Jaime Minguia, Saturday, May the 4th, Cinco de Mayo. And what we're here for, the big one, the biggest fight of the year, no doubt, live on the zone worldwide. All the marbles are out for grabs. WBC heavyweight champion Tyson Fury fights the unbeaten, former undisputed cruiserweight champion Alexander Usyk, now unified, May 18th, live on the zone worldwide. All that 
is coming up in the next three to four weeks. And by the way, I mean, we could have had another title there because we've got Bivol versus Baturbia coming up as well, <laughs> June 1st. I mean, part of the five versus five, we're going to announce that on Monday, the five versus five as well. And that's, that's crazy. That's yeah. crazy. I got in trouble a little bit, by the way, because I kind of thought what the five versus five was. Made a video of it, got told to take it down. <laughs> Troublemaker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it slapped my wrist. I was like, I'm sorry. I just got excited, got excited by it. Uh, Sugar Hill speaks well, doesn't he? We don't really hear from him much. Very softly spoken. Good I, to hear do you know him. what I like? I like when a trainer doesn't have this huge ego and wants to be the center of attention. He said it there. He's got a job to do, a very important job. You know, you talk about thinking. You're talking about two of the best thinkers out there. Um, and yeah, what, what a man, what a, what a coach. There what he is. Promoter. There he is. What a promoter. Look at him. Look at him. He's he's loving it. Good. Absolutely. Frank, can I be honest with you? You scared me. When Queensbury kind of put this out and said, okay, press conference, Tyson Fury, and nothing. <laughs> and I was on the phone to everyone saying, well, what, what's going on? Cancelled? What's going on? And all of a sudden, I can breathe a sigh of relief because it isn't that. It's just Tyson Fury doing what Tyson Fury does best. Which is brilliant, promoting a fight and yeah, being well Tyson Fury. I well mean, he's, a, he's an unbelievable character. I mean... He, what he does in the ring, he does outside as well, the best. He's just brilliant at what he does. I, I like the way he spoke about it as well. I don't know who he was pointing at, but he said, there's a heavyweight in the room, speak some crap sometimes. Like, you know, promote yourself, get in the ring, and then you've got to prove yourself. And since you've had Tyson Fury, he's done that. Well, he's done it. I mean, he's been, from day one, he's been very vocal in, in his ability. I mean, I was looking at some old, uh, an old footage, Jesse. We were looking at some, some something that was going out, and... He's there and he's, he, he must have been in his early, not even early 20s, probably about 19 or something like that. And he said, I'm going to be world champion. Now, I know a lot of guys say that, but, you know, you can see he's feeling and he meant it. And that's exactly how it's been. He, he's, he's a one-off. He is a one-off. I mean, I, I look back and think about fighters who, you know, engage, get, get an engagement with the public, funny, Always got something to say, you know, and we all show up like we are. We're in Morecambe, by the way, aren't we? Look, look at the big turnout for Morecambe. I know. You know, we're up about here. Four hours there's, no here. there's no, there's no <laughs> opponent here, no. it's just Tyson. Yeah. And, you know, and I think to himself, you know, my dream fight, would have been my dream fight, would have been Muhammad Ali and Tyson Fury for the press conference. <laughs> just for the you press pay conference. Pay-per-view on the yeah, press conference. Brilliant. How, how do you compare Tyson to Prince Nassim Hamid? You, you worked with uh, the Prince, again, yeah. such a, a great speaker. Could, like, if, when he spoke, the crowd just shut up and listened. Both of these guys are such good talkers. How do you compare the two? Um, how do I pair them? Look, they were both in their time. You know, they were they were men of their times. You know, they were they were thrilling fighters, exciting fighters. In in some of the best fights I've certainly been involved with. You know, bar none. I mean, Naz had some great fights, some really, really, really brilliant fights, some brilliant nights I had with him, and. Uh, and it's the same with Tyson, and they're continuing Tyson. But Tyson's going further. I mean, he's the guy who's actually going to unify all the belts. Yeah. Or he's fighting to unify the belts on the 18th, and I think he's going to do it because he's he has the ability to do it. He's going in there with an undefeated fighter that no one, we're certainly not, or he's not, I should say, underestimating, who's done everything at every level, going back to when he was an amateur, you know, the, the success he had in the Olympics. Looking at him as a cruiserweight, he's probably the best cruiserweight of his generation. Yep. And he's done everything as a heavyweight. And, he, you know, you don't think of him as a cruiserweight anymore because he's been heavyweight, what, for now three years, four years? Yeah, maybe? four years. Yeah. Four years. So he's grown into it. It's going to be it's going to be an exciting fight. It, they fancy it, by the way. They do fancy the job. So I know our side really fancies it. But I, I, I think... I don't think it's going to be such a technical fight. I think I genuinely think it will be a. I think it'll get down to the nitty gritty, and I think Tyson will knock him over. Go on then. For for all the big fights that you've promoted, as far as the magnitude uh, and what's on the line, where does this rank as, as you as a promoter and the fights you've got? No, number one. Number one. Number one, Darren. Yeah, absolutely. You know, for what's on the line, it's the first time this century that uh, the heavyweight belts have been uh, been fought for to unify them. Was it 25 years? And I think last time it was only three of the major belts yeah. on the line. So we got four now on the line. Or, or um, eight if you ask Tyson Fury. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm talking about what we, you know, as yeah, we in the yeah. trade know. And you're right, what, you know, what's been said. But it's it's the, the magnitude of it, you know, where it's taking place. You know, all the big fights, when I was growing up when I was a kid, the Rumble in the Jungle, you know, the Thriller in Manila, the big fight they had in Jamaica with... Uh, with, with oh. uh, 
um, Foreman and Joe Frazier, phenomenal fight. You look at, look at all those fights, all American, the best American heavyweights. Didn't take place in America, they all went to these even, even Mike areas. Tyson, Buster none Douglas. Of, yeah, yeah. None of them, Buster Douglas yeah. in Tokyo. All those fights. Were, here we are now. We're now in with the with the new the new players on the scene. You know, Riyadh sees and his excellency in his team. You're looking what's happening now and the money that's being invested in this. This is this is the new Vegas. This is what where this is the center of boxing, and it's got the biggest fight. They they've actually got it together. The biggest fight. Unbelievable undercard, not that the show even needs an undercard because it's such a good fight. It's the most phenomenal event and the most phenomenal fight this century. Bar none, bar none. What I wonder, what's really intrigued me is that, because you've always been known to take a gamble on the fighter, Naz was a flyweight. You know, no, who, who promotes the flyweight think he's going to be such a big draw yeah. as he was. Joe Karzaghi, you know, you had to ram him down TV people's throats. Yeah. You saying he's going to be a star. Now, we knew his ability, but I mean, the, the, sell, the sellable factor. You kept saying he's going to he's going to be the one, and he was. But Tyson Fury, you know, after the Klitschko, when, when he went off the rails and he was he was so big, he was never going to get back to any decent shape to be a boxer. What convinced you to take that risk of working with him? Because nobody else would. It was a little bit before that, to be honest, Barry. When, if you remember, he, I was with Derek Chisor, and Derek came in, and he had, and he had about six really good wins under his belts against ranked fighters. And we got, I think he was about number one or number two in the, in the, in the, uh, what couple of the governing bodies. And Tyson had a few fights fall through, and I went and met him. I always remember it was just over the Christmas holidays at the time, and we met him at St Pancras, come down on the train. <laughs> with his then trainer Peter Fury and we sat down and when I said you know, and you know I said we want to make the fight I want to make the fight with you and Derek and I, can, I think I can make it for a final eliminator for Klitschko's title and I mean remember Derek Chisora is with me and I'm and I fancied Derek to beat him and give him a couple of fights because I wanted to you know promote him get him out there because I'm, I'm not being disrespectful but I don't think he was promoted as well as he should have been yeah, sure. Anyway, we made the fight with Derek Chisora. Derek, as I say, going into that fight, I fancied him. And he came out and he absolutely took Derek to school. I mean, Derek, he switch hitting, he was doing everything. Yeah. Derek never won a second of the round. And he was coming off, as I say, a string of really good performances. And he destroyed him. And I said to him after the fight, I said, you know what? You will beat Klitschko. If you ask me, I swear to you, I said, you will beat Klitschko. You do what you did tonight and you will box his head off. You will beat Klitschko. And then... We had a, not him and I, but there was a big fallout with his management. When I must say a fallout, there was a bit of a liberty taken, but we sorted all that out afterwards. And they made the fight, but they went to Germany. I didn't want to go to Germany. I wanted to go to purse bids and do it in the UK, because yeah. I felt in Germany, being very honest, you don't get a fair shake at all, or you know, fair crack at a whip there. It's, 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 it's hard work in Germany. But he went to Germany, despite all that, done, it, done his job and done, done the job and done what he had to do. Off the rails, as you say, I mean, some of the stories I was hearing were quite horrific. He obviously was at, he's at, the, at the, probably the lowest depth he can be as a human being that you're contemplating committing suicide. I mean, that must be, you know, when you think you're in so much pain, the only way out is to kill yourself. I mean, that is a real horrible place to be. And the weight was piling on, he was boozing, he was doing a bit of drugging and, and so forth. And, and it just was all going wrong. And, and I can't remember when we had a couple of conversations and then let's get together and I met him and we just sat down I was looking at him and, I, and, it, and it took me straight back to when I met him with in because uh, I've been involved with him before but yeah. when I sat down actually and done the deal with him at St Pancras and I sat there and I looked at him and I could see that in his eye yeah. you know when you can look at someone you can see and I could see that he want you know that he, 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 there was a hunger for it he wanted it and I felt that for him, boxing was going to be salvation. You know, this was this is something he could aim for. This is going to pull him back together. I mean, he was huge. Yeah, I mean, he exactly was huge. What I mean. It's like having Ricky Hatton strapped around his waist <laughs> yeah. Yeah. on a good day. <laughs> yeah. But you know, and it was it, he, had, he had all this weight on, and I'm you know, and I thought to myself, you know what? I, I really believed he could do it. And then I had the job of having to convince because a couple of things have been said, which um, was taken out of context, and some stupid things were said, and I had to get. You know, we had to get through all that, and we had. And I remember walking him into BT, BT Sport at the time, going in there. So right, I said, and we had a deal with him. I said, I want to, I want to bring him up, and I want to I want you to talk to him, and I want to do this. 
and there was quite a bit of you know worried about it. And you remember they're used to dealing with uh, like you know doing deals with like the you know with the FA, with the Champions <laughs> League, you know, cricket, rugby, and all that. So in comes me, Tyson. He brought. Oh, the sheep Tyson. He brought Matthew, who he's mate, who's a very successful businessman, and um, it, you know it was a it was a it was a really really um, really surreal meeting, and we're there, and I could see them, and they were just like couldn't you know it was just they, they didn't know what the effing hell was going on, like sitting there, and but he, he just talks them, charmed them, does what he does. Yeah. And we said, and I said to him, I'm telling you now, we you know we we I think we've been at BT for about. A year by then, I'm yeah, not sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we, yeah. we're doing maybe, Box maybe Nation like that, and that. Yeah. And I said, I'm telling you now, we will get this. This channel will become number one in boxing. We will deliver. He'll head it up. Here, we'll have the best heavyweight. I'm telling you now, we will deliver the best heavyweight in boxing. We'll be the heavyweight channel plus all the other guys that we're bringing through. And and you know that that's what happened over the time. But it was a commitment to him. He had those two fights where he was, as you know, he was overweight. We did did them. First time he ever fought in Manchester, unbelievably, was we put him on an undercard. Oh, yeah. And then we went to Ireland. He fought under, under. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Box on Carl Frampton's undercard. Yeah. On the undercard. And then there was another two fights before he challenged for the world title fight. And I said no. I, I remember talking to Shelley Finkel, and I, and I know in their mind they're looking for an opponent. And I'm thinking to myself, they're going to look at him thinking, oh, because it's well documented, all the problems. They're going to look at him think, we're, we'll have that job, we're fancy that. And I've, and I've sort of, and I've, I've sort of looked, at, looked a lot, at, um, studied him quite a bit. Wilder. Um, Wilder, and I'm, I'm thinking to myself, he can do this, I know he can do this. You know, and that, the only thing in the back of my mind was, you know, the weight and so forth. So we talked about it, and everybody, and I mean everybody, told him not to do it. And him and I... And he, you know, I mean, him, he just, I fight anybody, he said, and we bumped and we went for it and did the fight. He got robbed. Oh, he boxed great. Didn't lose he it, but he great. did box great. I mean, but that last round when he went down and I'm like, what the, f I didn't think he was going to get up yeah. that in a million years. I, that, I can remember Wilder doing all the bloody yeah. cutthroat stuff. I can remember, <laughs> you know, all his team all jumping up, running at the ring, thinking it was over. And just as they got there, he sort of like, it's the greatest thing. Not only did he, not only did he get up, I see. I mean, Wilder's jaw nearly hit his boots when he got up, and then he went on to be on top. Of, yeah, he went yeah. straight on him, and and, got, and you know, all all of that. He's, he, he is an exceptional, exceptional fighter. You know, people have got they you know talk about Wilder like he was nothing. He was champion for six years. He was statistically the hev hardest punching heavyweight it, it, in, since I've been around. And you have to be ringside to see. Like, oh, he'd pull, a, oh, mate, he'd pull a punch out of nowhere and take your head off. I mean, he was a phenomenal puncher, and he and you know and it, it, what he's done is is purely down to it is down obviously to his determination, to the heart that he's got. He's got a big pair of balls. I mean, there's no doubt about that. You know, when he's in there, he's in there to win. And I suppose what's added a bit of spice to this fight is his last performance against Nagano, and people think that you know was he gone is he gone is he, his age got to him what's happened everybody's got that in their head are you concerned at all no well could you know say i'm concerned yeah i mean that's a silly thing to say yeah i'm I, I i'm concerned but i'm not concerned because i've got faith in him and his faith and, and his ability gives me faith and what i've got faith in is the fact that you know he's got a good boxing brain you know, for all these things about heart and that, he's smart up here. He's adaptable, isn't he? And he ch and he keeps adapting his style. I mean, when you think Harry come out, he was pretty much of a you know he switch hit, it you know jab, that in, move, really. very good, but move he'd be very hard to hit. And he's cha he changed that second fight against against Wilder. He just changed his style completely. Yeah. Just you know straight on the front foot, backed him up and done a job on him. And and these last few fights, that's what he's been doing. He's been trading with people. You, you yeah. look at the fights, he's actually standing and having to fight with them. What Fury would you prefer to see, May 18th? The Fury that boxed against this Wilder? Or this one, this one, because I think Aggressive. maybe this cut, I hate to say it, you know, it's horrible when it happened, but maybe it's a blessing in disguise in some ways because you look at him, I mean, you know, you, we've all been around fighters, you know what, what is, you look at him, look how well he looks in his face and you look at his, how well cut he is. It's not, he's going into a training camp again, which he peaked for. Thankfully, all that sparring he had, was more or less finished by the time he got cut. So now he's coming out of the, come out of that training camp, 
got to let the cut heal. He's had he's had a few weeks off, but he's not had to go into a new training camp to lose weight yeah. or anything. He's fit and he's well. And he, we were just talking over there, and he said what he's concerned about is that he's, he, he feels he could fight now and he doesn't want to overpeak. Yeah, yeah. So it's getting himself back into there. But I, I, and Usyk's, Usyk's had to do the same as well. He knows he's had to stop his training camp. But I, I, I think we're going to get a classic fight. I think these two guys, once, they, once that bell goes, they're both undefeated. You know, one of them's coming from a real, you know, impeccable background as, 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 as much as an amateur. All what he's done as, you know, Olympian and all these, he's won. Probably the best cruiserweight of his generation. Come up a weight. He's been a heavyweight now, what, for four years? Mm -hmm. So he's well he's settled. Yeah, he's well settled. Well, don't forget that. Yeah, he's, a big, yeah. he's a big limb. Yeah, he's a, and he's settled down there as a heavyweight. And I just, you know, for me, I, I just think that it's going to be a cracker of a fight. I do, I genuinely do feel that Tyson will stop him. I do feel that. All right, Frank, really appreciate it. That was a fantastic story, by the way. Great, lovely. Yeah. Lovely. I, enjoy, I enjoyed that. Thank you very much. Um, the Zone, yes. by the way, as we know, home of the boxing. And we've got so much more coming your way as well. Hey, champ. I know why you're here. You're a born winner, the top dog. You have a proper punch on you. It only takes one, eh? But I know you're not all about throwing haymakers. You know your bobs from your wheeze. And you know the zone's got over 100 live events every year. Over 100. Proper stack. All the action, the chaos, the comebacks, the non stop knockout. Big fights every week. So get those gloves back on. Together, we're boxing royalty. The zone, undisputed. Yeah, some big fights coming your way on the zone. It starts this Saturday. Jordan Gill versus Zelf about that one happening in Manchester. Really good fight. Obviously, Jordan Gill coming off that best fight of his career. He called it against Michael Conlon in Belfast. We then moved to April 27th for Ramirez versus Bafelemi. Hernandez versus Lugo. Cracking fight that. Two guys that just meet in the center of the ring and will fight and talk about this one. I mean, we've had fights postponed and on and off. That's the same with Taylor Catchwell too. It is now on again. Saturday, May 25th, two guys who do not like each other. That's, the, that's an understatement, to be honest with you. And they're going to settle it in the ring in Leeds, May 25th. That was um, a nice story from Frank. Yeah, he's, he's the best storyteller, Frank. Yeah. Well, next to Tyson Fury. You got some great stories, Frank. And, and this I was like, I was like, what's going on here, Frank? Know, like, We've got I, two I, minutes I to wrap, and you were like, yeah, Warren. honestly. But, but you know what? It, but to believe in it, because he was massively out of shape, Tyson Fury, he yep. was. And to believe that he would get into, not, not only into shape, to be able to be what he's become, it takes either a foresight or a Incredible. real or a real stroke Incredible. of luck. Can I can I put you both on the spot? We are going to wrap. I've been told to wrap in my ear as well. Got ten seconds on the spot. As it stands right now, a lot can change in five and a half weeks. You see the sparring, you see them in the weigh-ins. Who? If you have 50 quid, I know you're both skint, but if you have 50 <laughs> quid, where does your 50 quid go right now? Usyk or Fury? Fury, big, big and always beats a good little. Fury, you've changed your mind. I asked you this. No, 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 it's just, I have to go. I have you to always go change your mind. Can you just yeah. stick with it's one? Just, <laughs> and, and I want, and I want, I want you Fury, want Fury AJ. AJ. I want Fury AJ. Go on. Yeah, I think Fury. I, I do. If he's at his best. And you have to judge it at that, I think. So I think Tyson Fury. I feel like I'm going to have to split the middle here, but I don't. <laughs> Draw. Give. Yeah, draw. <laughs> draw, and we, we see it again because there is a rematch clause. All right, guys, look, we are going to do so much more in the build-up to this one, but make sure you stay locked in, stick with us, because we have a big one coming up May 18th, live on zone. He's over there somewhere. Mr. Tyson Fury takes on Alexander Usyk for all the marbles, and it is the accolade as Mr. Undisputed Heavyweight Champion of the World. We'll see you then. Live on the zone worldwide May 18th. The fight of the century. Tyson Fury versus Alexander Usyk for the undisputed heavyweight championship of the world. Tyson Fury looks to reign as king of the division. But Alexander Usyk is undefeated and coming for the crown. For the first time in over 20 years, all the belts are on the line. Ring of Fire, live on the zone worldwide, May 18th.